We wanted to understand if there is a neural limit to what we can learn. Well, rather, we know that there's a neural limit to what we can learn. We wanted to know if we could see it by looking at the brain directly and from there trying to infer what a particular subject might be able to learn in a short period of time and what's in that space of things that they can't learn. There are physical limits to what a person can achieve. I'm not going to be a particularly good free throw shooter no matter how many times I try, but are there also cognitive or mental neural limits that we can establish? And that's what we've been able to do, I think, for the first time in this work. So we found that we could uh, predict what our subject would be able to learn in a short amount of time. We recorded neural activity from a small region of the brain and uh, we translated the neural activity we recorded into the movement of a cursor on a computer screen. Uh, so for, for example, one pattern of neural activity would move the cursor left and a different pattern would move it to the right. Uh, now midway through each experiment we, we changed that mapping. So a different pattern would be required to move it to the left and a different pattern would be required to move it to the right. And we studied whether the subject would be able to, to relearn uh, the mapping between neural activity and cursor movement. We found that the subjects were able to learn some mappings, uh, but not others. And furthermore, we could predict which ones they would learn and which ones they wouldn't learn. These findings are important for several reasons. First, uh, some psychological disorders and uh, trauma to the brain, like stroke, are linked with abnormal neural activity patterns. And uh, this work, uh, suggests a way by which we might train the brain to show normal neural activity patterns again. And so uh, a procedure like the one that we used uh, in this study uh, might help these patients. Another reason why this is important is that it's well known that it takes a long time to become an expert in something. So just because you're good at piano doesn't necessarily mean that you're good at tennis. And it's well known that it takes a long time to become an expert. And so our study uh, suggests a reason why uh, there might be uh, constraints in the brain uh, that uh, require large amounts of training to become an expert. And furthermore, our study might suggest ways in which we can train people to become experts in something more quickly. And lastly, uh, uh, brain-computer interfaces have been developed to assist disabled patients by giving them a computer cursor or a prosthetic limb that they can control just by thinking about it, like you or I control our healthy limbs. And our work uh, can suggest ways in which we can train subjects to use these brain-computer interfaces more quickly and proficiently so that these patients can use these systems uh, reliably for long periods of time.